Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. It is a Thursday, nine days away from kickoff of the 2024 football season in Manhattan, which means it is time for your weekly recruiting update. But before we talk about recruiting, let's remind you that we are getting closer and closer to being one year out from the 2025 Aer Lingus College Football Classic. And what better way to kick off the 2025 college football season than cheering on K-State in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic in Dublin, Ireland. The Cats will square off with Iowa State on August 23rd, 2025. Whether it's a quick trip to Dublin for the game, a multi-city adventure throughout the Irish countryside, or exploring the Emerald Isle on your own, there is a package for you. Visit Cats2Ireland.com for information on official travel and hospitality packages. That's Cats, the number two, Ireland.com. And uh, we are almost a year away, 366 yeah. days from now. I, I was literally about to say, I'm no uh, mathematician, but I believe that's 366 days away from, from right now. We'd either be uh, really excited or probably pretty upset. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you really kind of go by, the game will probably start at 11 a.m. Central for 24, yeah. uh, almost a year from now. We'll either be pretty stoked that K-State beat a probably pretty good Iowa State team to start the year, or probably pretty pissed that we flew all the way to Ireland to see a loss. Yeah, we are about 8,784 minutes away uh, from oh, 8,784 8, hours away. I guess you, you want the minutes on that one? Uh, I can no. give it to you. That's we are 527,040 minutes away from knowing uh, if we are going to be angry or happy to start the 2025 college football season. That I mean, that that's a long flight home after a loss. So, I mean, that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, yeah, I thought the, the drive back from Columbia last year kind of sucked after that loss, but uh, it'd be an even bigger kick in the you know what if uh, you're having to fly back from Ireland and deal with everything. So let's not think about bad things. Let's move on to some positives and bring you your weekly recruiting update. And this second straight week that basketball is going to get mentioned, and we're going to kick it off with basketball because we knew that K State had already gotten AJ Debonsa set for a visit. He will be coming next weekend. He'll be in attendance for the UT Martin football game. We knew that K-State was also in the mix for the number three player in the class of 2025, Darren Peterson, and he has now set his visit date for K-State. Uh, he will be in town in later on September, and this is going to be an interesting follow. I mean, he's everything you want. Five-star, he's one of the highest-ranked dudes in the class. He's a consensus five-star uh, throughout all the different recruiting services. This is a little bit of a different one, though. It feels like the Debonsa recruitment is – a, like the doors cracked a little bit wider for K State for Peterson. Um, yeah, there's certainly some interest there, but it has seemed like that the heavy interest might be with Kansas, and he's already taken his official visit to KU. Um, what what can you tell us about Darren Peterson and where your optimism level would be that K State can make a move here? Yes, I'm probably less optimistic than with Devonta, uh, which is kind of. I mean, when you're ranked that high, like it's kind of like there isn't a lot of separation, but it is funny to say that I feel better about the number one player in the yeah. 2025 class than the number three. Uh, but I, I think that KU is probably a pretty substantial favorite, but I, I don't think that it is kind of like a, oh, he's just visiting K-State just kind of for the heck of it. Like the, this is... A recruitment that he he is pretty interested in k-state and even with ku being a heavy favorite right now there's kind of been some whispers that the door is a little bit unlocked still and that there could be some other teams that get involved but i think that it's a big deal and anytime you can get a top three player to come visit i think it's a big deal and it's nothing to really sneeze out that k-state's getting two of the top three uh to come to manhattan and visit so I think that it's a big deal, and it, it will be a challenge to kind of be that team that can challenge KU, but I, I think that that is still a really big deal. Yeah, I guess if you want any reason to maybe be slightly optimistic uh, and, and look for good things here if you're a K-State fan, uh, coincidentally, Darren Peterson is now set to go to Prolific Prep, where Coleman Hawkins 
uh, finished up his high school basketball before he went to Illinois. So uh, there is, you know, somewhat of kind of a, a, a trail there that you can follow. But yeah, just worthy of an update. And note that K-State is getting another high-level guy on campus. Uh, it, it's just, it'll be seeing if they can actually make any headway. We certainly know that the NIL side of it uh, is going to give K-State a chance with uh, more guys than than what they had been accustomed to. They were already getting deeper and better looks from guys after the first season of Jerome Tang and Company because you had two of the best players in college basketball that took their game to another level to get there in Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson. You go on the Elite Eight run, you have a staff that is incredibly fun and relatable for a lot of these players, and it, it makes sense that K-State would be in the mix. So we saw that. You land David Castillo. You get down right in the thick of it with Pat and Gongba. You only get one of the two, but now you're in a position where you add the NIL that everybody knows is there from how successful K-State was in the transfer portal this past offseason. You've got the right kind of equation to start to add up to maybe get some more of these guys, but uh, it, it still may be a long shot, but worth noting for uh, where basketball is setting up right now. I also think that, and we've talked about this, that high school basketball recruiting right now is so volatile if you're not going to get a guy that can be an NBA player after one year. And we, we've seen that yeah. there's probably more multi-year transfers out there than guys that stay at one school for all four years. And that's just that's not just a case eight thing. That's a throughout college basketball thing. So if you can go after like those top guys like case eight's been doing, I think that you should because you can roll the dice and gamble and you hopefully get an NBA player and then you kind of move on. And that's what you do for high school recruiting because until things start to change, I don't want to say that high school basketball recruiting is a waste of time, but I think that I would rather get guys from the portal that are are multi-year guys that are left in the portal than get a high schooler who is probably more attracted to finding that next stop and getting more NIL money along the way. And I'm absolutely with you on that. I the the high school recruiting stuff, it is for the most part kind of a waste of time right now unless you're getting guys like this where these are legit day one difference makers. Like we've heard the conversations that David Castillo might be able to crack into that. That's incredibly rare for somebody like David Castillo to come to a team like what K-State has in place and to be the level of recruit he was. And like David Castillo was what at times like inside the top 30. Uh, and then, you know, he got, he was a little banged up. So he missed some time for, during evaluation period. So he ended up, I think a little bit lower than that. Um, he is going to be a unicorn essentially for players that go to programs that are in, you know, the top half of some of the best basketball leagues in the country. Like that's not normal uh, for the way it seems like he may be trending, but Guys like Debonza and Peterson, they are dudes that day one, you would expect them to come in and be stars for you as freshmen, which is a rarity in the sport right now. So we'll move on. Let's get into football because you started kind of unraveling this uh, either yesterday or two days ago, and uh, you just sent a, a message to DY and I, and you're like, I think the, the visitor list for the Arizona game is going to be a lot better than we anticipated. Uh, what can you tell us about how K-State is – miraculously going to get some important players uh, on campus and visiting for the Friday night Arizona game. Yeah. When the game got announced on a Friday, my first thought was, well, that kind of sucks because that kind of takes the air out of what would have been a big recruiting weekend. Uh, if you had that on a Saturday against two teams, I'll probably be in the top 15 when that game kicks off. Uh, so th that part kind of stung at first, but then, you kind of see how the high schools around here have really navigated having K-State play on a Friday. And KU actually plays that same night at, in uh, Children's Mercy, I believe, yeah. is where the, the Illinois game is. I had to remember that that, that, that game was also taking place. Yeah, which also, like, this is, this is not anything to do with recruiting, but, like, I think that will be a pretty cool environment. Like, it'll be smaller, so it'll be packed in, but we know, like, soccer stadiums do really – well for crowd environment i'm actually fascinated to see uh what the response is there I, I think it'll be cooler for them to play there than than arrowhead this year but uh continue uh so having both uh both schools play on a friday night you've kind of seen some high schools have decided to okay let's play on a thursday and you know, that manhattan high is doing that 
which smart because traffic would be such a disaster in Manhattan if if they had a football game that night too. Uh, and school canceled in Manhattan as well. And Junction City is, is also moving to a Thursday night. Uh, but because Manhattan has a free Friday night, that means that J.J. Dunnigan can come to Manhattan and go to the K-State Arizona game. Uh, you look at commit schedules and you see, oh, uh, Dalton Knapp has a Thursday game. He wants to be at the Arizona game, so he is coming. Uh, and then uh, another commit, Logan Bartley. Their team and how... Uh, some states around the country now are doing it. They have a bye week that week. So it's a perfect time for him to come up to KC and take an official visit because he hasn't taken an official visit. So, so you look around the country and you look around the state even and how many teams are playing on Thursday, how many teams have like a, a week off uh, because also Texas high school football has bye weeks. So you kind of see all of that. And you think, okay, this visitor list might not be as bad as kind of everybody anticipated being uh, because it was just going to be a limited, uh, honestly, it was just going to be a limited uh, group of guys that you thought could come. But now the more that we've kind of dug in, it seems like that visitor list might not be as kind of barren as one would uh, one would have thought. Yeah, it's just it's it's impressive and honestly probably best case scenario for K State the way it's working out because it certainly could have been a wash and this was one of the concerns that you're not going to get anything out of a Friday game like you're losing a recruiting weekend and to some extent K State still is um, because like you listed a lot of these guys are already committed but still it's it's good to have them in it's good to not have an empty weekend. Uh, and it, it salvages somewhat when originally we thought you're really only going to have five weekends to do this. They'll get some benefit out of it. And, you know, smaller grouping, probably a little bit more of an intimate uh, setting for these guys. And so that's probably a good thing, too. So we'll uh, we'll keep yeah. everybody updated when that comes around. But as I say, well, we'll, we'll keep everybody updated. But it, it's it's sounding better than I anticipated. I thought that it would be like a week of the Arizona game. We kind of see. Some people say that they were coming to it, uh, but it looks more like uh, there's a lot more of a schedule on, okay, this is one weekend that I'm coming and then another weekend. So there's a thread on uh, KSO right now that has all the visits that we've uncovered so far and all the games. And I think that every home game right now has a visitor on it that, that we've uncovered, but I, I'm not 100% on that. So don't, don't quote me. Oh, wait, maybe, maybe the games in November don't, but at least through Oklahoma State or oh, through KU. Okay, yeah. So plenty of time until we get to uh, November 16th, which will be uh, the first <laughs> November game of the year. All right, final thing today. This is a little bit of an update and notable of some news happening in the NCAA. There are going to be new roster size limits that are going to be in- implemented by the NCAA. For men's basketball, it is going to be 15 for football, it will be 105, and you think, oh, wow, okay, that, that's a pretty substantial boost in scholarships that can be allocated in football. Not much different with what's going on in basketball. The difference here is, though, these are roster limits, so you could put everybody on scholarship that you have, but what has been proposed and what is expected to be coming down the line, I believe it's the start of the 25-26 uh, season, is you can only have 105 guys on your football team. You can only have 15 guys on your basketball team. Now, you could scholarship all of them, uh, or you know, in football, you could still say, well, you know, we're only going to do our 85 and we'll have 20 walk-on spots, or however you want to do it. Um, some of the sports have benefited greatly from this, like baseball. They, they have upped it. They can – they can have 34 full scholarships now for baseball. Like baseball had, had been hurting in all these other sports. Uh, basketball, I don't know that it's going to make a big difference. We already see some teams are like, why would I use all 13 scholarships? I can't play all 13 of those guys. Um, K-State's kind of going to be a rarity this year using all of their scholarships up. Uh, but the football side will be interesting to follow because we know over the course of the last 30 years that K-State has had a lot of success with getting these walk-ons from all over the state and or you know other places in the country that we've seen developing them and eventually those guys become scholarship contributors your pool is going to be shrinking now though in how many of those guys you can take 
uh, and and that's severely going to to hurt some of these teams and uh, certainly be a, a bummer for teams like K-State and others that have to abide by these limits. Yeah, I think basketball-wise, I kind of laughed when I saw that the scholarship and uh, the scholarship limit was 15 and the roster limit 15 because I I would be very curious to see if there is any school in the country basketball wise that wants to fill up all 15 spots. I, I think that I think that if you asked a lot of coaches anonymously, I think that some would have wanted less instead of more. But that I mean, I, I think that that's just kind of where I stand on that. Football will be very interesting, though, because like you said, the walk on stuff is going to be a lot different. I, I think that it's just going to make that what used to be walk on recruiting a lot more competitive uh, because you'll see somebody kind of you, will post an offer from K state or wherever that probably was going to be a walk on in the old rules. That's now going to be a scholarship player. And I think that that just really kind of adds more competition. And I'm really interested to see how that all plays out because I, I don't see much really changing from like what, at least a school like K-State is really looking for. I just think that the thing that will be changed will be, well, instead of like the the walk-ons right now that K-State typically gets are, you're probably have a handful of FCS offers, maybe some D2 offers, or you have a PWO to K-State. Mm -hmm. Well, now it, that player might have FCS scholarships and FBS scholarships and Power 5 scholarships. In, in addition to K State, so you you have a lot of a little bit more competition, but it, it's probably better for the players, I think, because instead of having that one or two year period where you might not be on scholarship, but you might be later on, now you'll probably be on scholarship the whole time. So from from a player's perspective, I think that it is a good thing. And for the players too, you think about it, like even the guys that get trimmed down a little bit, and so you know the. The opportunity isn't there for uh, the you know the the random kid from uh, St. Joseph, Missouri to get uh, you know a PWO or something. Well, he he can go to one of those D two or FCS offers now, and he's just going to be in the portal two years from now if he's still good enough to be at your program. Like we've seen K State be strong enough and how they've been able to get guys to bump up from the FCS level, like. You're still going to have it. We know that that's kind of turning into a feeder thing for all these programs. I mean, the Miami of Ohio coach today was talking about how Alabama wanted their kicker and Alabama got their kicker. Uh, so it's it'll be an interesting follow. It's notable. Uh, it's definitely going to be a bigger hardship on football staffs because I think they still liked at least the ones that utilize it the way you needed to. Um, like programs like K-State, you, you need to utilize the walk-on situation. This will be a little bit of a a, a pain for them, and uh, they'll have to adjust. But uh, that's just kind of something to keep everybody uh, locked in and in the know. The the thing that I think will hurt the most uh, isn't even like a a real like concern that I have, but it's more of like the the funny thing uh, because K State has had guys that have had like low level G five offers that end up taking a preferred walk on spot at K State instead. So I, I think that that is where you'll see kind of that more impactful thing, uh, because I, I believe actually that Sam Hecht is a guy that had like Mac offers and chose to go to K-State as a preferred walk on instead. Yeah, uh, here's if for anybody interested in how the new scholarship limits are going to work out in some of the other sports. Some of them have wild increases. Like I talked about, baseball is going to go from 11.7 to 34 uh, that you can give out, that is going to be a difference maker. And that is one that could be of benefit to a program like K-State, uh, where you know that K-State as a whole ha is starting to have more of those financial resources. A guy like Pete Hughes has enough energy, like maybe he can rally enough support and and say, hey, if we if we can get this many scholarships, like we can, we can come through for these. Uh, some of the other interesting ones that uh, are proposed increases uh, women's tumbling, uh, so gymnastics uh, of some kind, they go from 14 to 55. Uh, beach volleyball goes from 6 to 19. Uh, cross country goes up from 5 or 6 to 17. Um, another inner, like crazy jump. Men's track and field goes from 12.6 to 45. 
um, 18 to 45 for the women. Men's lacrosse, 12.6 to 48, which is a nuts number. Uh, and then women's rowing is one of the more insane, insane ones, 20 to 68 on women's rowing. So God bless the school that puts 68 women's rowers on scholarship. Uh, again, that's just a roster limit, but you could scholarship as many as 68 uh, in women's rowing coming up now. Um, some of the others are substantial increases, but like nothing as insane as uh, being able to have 68 on your women's rowing roster. So. All right, I got I got a little bit of trivia. I did, I decided to uh, look up uh, Sam Peck's recruitment, kind of how that went down. Yeah, uh, offered by Kent State, and it was Matthew Middleton that offered Sam Peck. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, that's a good way to end it. That'll do it for our recruiting update today. We'll be back with another one of these next week. It'll be in the middle of a lot of craziness because it'll be game week. Preparing for UT Martin, keeping you updated on that. But Drew will have the lowdown on the next wave of recruiting news and notes. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Both. Thanks for watching and listening to K-State Online. If you want more on the Cats, we're always on over at On3. Find kstateonline.com. We'll get you hooked up there, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.